All right, good day everyone. This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar and we'll continue talking about crystal field theory. So now what I want to talk about is I want to talk about some of the shapes um, that we get. And, and the most common shape that I want to talk about is the octahedral shape. Okay, an octahedral sh uh, object is a, a three-dimensional object that has eight different faces, what we call an octahedron. Now, the, this is the most common shape, and, and the octahedral shape results from six ligands coming in. There are other shapes out there that we'll get to, but that tends to be the really common one we talk about. And the reason I get these different shapes has to do with um, looking at the orbitals. So these are the 5D orbitals, and um, um, we're going to look at the axes here. So... Um, the way these orbitals are oriented in this picture is the z-axis is always up and down. Okay, the z-axis is up and down. So that color there is the z-axis, the z, the z, the z, and then the z. Okay, so that equals the z-axis, or z, uh, the z-axis. Uh, we will make pink okay, will equal the x-axis, okay, so in this case that's the x-axis there, um, this is the x-axis, and you can see that the way these pictures are oriented, uh, we've kind of holding the axes um, constant, but still I think putting colors to them kind of helps out a little bit, all right, and then um, the y-axis is blue, all right, Alright, there's my Y, there's my Y, okay, so that equals the Y axis, and let me just put this pink out here a little bit, like so, alright, okay, so you can see that these orbitals are oriented very differently along the axes, if you look at the the dz squared orbital. The dz squared orbital is more or less aligned directly with the up and down of right along the um, z axis. It really looks kind of like a p orbital with a little torus in the middle here. Okay, but if we look at, um, oh, say the um, d, uh, the dx z axis, it is oriented along the xz plane here, okay, so it's oriented along the plane. Um, the dyz axis here is more oriented along the, the yz plane, the dxy is oriented along the xy plane, and then you have the dx squared minus um, y squared, which is kind of oriented kind of like this, okay, it's kind of hard to visual, or at least for me, I'm not really good at visualizing things in three dimensions, but hopefully that helps out. So what happens is, depending on how these these orbit, depending on the orbital orientation, as my ligands, okay, as my ligands come in, the ligands can either, um, as they come in, they can either align directly up with an orbital, okay, and get really close to a certain orbital, um, depending on how, and how the alignment is. So if this say this ligand is coming in and it was aligning itself, and it was next to the dz squared orbital here, the dz squared is going to be pushed up to higher energy, but let's say that it was coming in and maybe it wasn't near one of these other orbitals, then maybe one of these other orbitals would be pushed down, so the d, dz squared would be pushed up to higher energy, and then the dx squared minus y squared, I'm just, this is just an example, arbitrary example, is going to be split down to a lower energy because it isn't feeling as much repulsion. So that's kind of what's going on with the energy splitting, but this is really important because the, it also explains the overall geometry of the complexes that we see. Okay, so what I want to do now is now that I've kind of just oriented you to the d, the d orbitals and you can kind of see the, the different planes um, that the d orbitals are aligned on, um, let's just go ahead and talk about that, that basic geometry. Um, so let's just take um, an example of a complex. I'm going to take iron 2 chloride, okay? Fe2 chloride. So what we have is we have iron, okay? Iron is going to be in 
it's plus two, okay, that's its oxidation stage two, so it's gonna have a plus ch two charge. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my chloride, uh, my chlorines come in, and they're gonna make a coordination complex, okay? So um, imagine, gonna kinda have to use some imagination here, so imagine that I have chlorine coming in here, chlorine coming in here, okay, and a chlorine coming in here, chlorine coming in here, so I've got four, and then what I want you to imagine is imagine there's kind of a, a line coming out of the paper, popping out of the paper in three dimensions, okay? So up here, it actually be up here is gonna be a chlorine, and then back behind it would be another chlorine, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a little dashed line, and that means that that's back behind, and there'll be a chlorine there, and then I'm gonna draw kind of a little uh, almost like a triangle thing here. We'll shade it in, and that means that it's it's popping out at me, okay? Um, and then a chlorine here, okay? And so you can see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six ligands that have come in. This is a very common thing that happens. Um, you can have other types. You can have four and, and, and so on. Generally not more than six, though, okay? Um, because basically I have six chlorines, that have surrounded the, the iron and it's totally surrounded, There you can't get any more ligands in there because the electrons will be repelling one another, so six tends to be the max. So what happens here? Well, um, let's just say that um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have, um, let me draw this for you if I can, hopefully I can do this justice. My art is, is kind of terrible, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a ligand here. All right, and then you're just going to have to imagine that this is three dimensions. Okay, so this is kind of a face that's popping out this way here. There's a ligand here and here. Okay, and then this is the front facing face here, like that. Okay, and then down here, here here, all right, and then I'll have another ligand back here, and then I'll just draw dotted lines that were behind, okay, drop that down there, that there, okay, so if you can imagine that this is kind of, so these are my six ligands here, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, and they've come in, um, they're actually, you know, puffy, a little fluffier than that, the chlorines. And then if you can imagine that in the middle here, okay, in the middle of this is uh, where my iron is, okay? So my iron is there, and my ligands have come in, and then the iron has the d orbitals, okay, are interacting with these ligands as they come in. Um, so when we have six ligands, okay, like this here, Six ligands almost always create um, an octa an octahedral geometry. Okay, the three-dimensional geometry of that is octahedral. So it kind of looks like a, a crystal, right? An octahedral an octahedron crystal. Uh, again, which is where kind of the term crystal field theory comes in. And what the heck? Since we're here, why not? Let's just look at the electron configuration of the orbitals. Um, so let's go ahead and do um, iron here and uh, let's uh, do the um, electronic configuration of iron. Um, do, 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 what is that? It's uh, argon. Uh, oh, I um, don't have my notes handy here so I've got to pull this out of my, 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 my bottom so to speak. Iron uh, 4s2 uh, 3d6. There we go. All right. So that's a naked iron. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to ionize it. And this was uh, iron to chloride. So um, we want, uh, this is a plus two. That's our oxidation state. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to ionize it, take away the S electrons. I'm going to have iron, argon, 3d6 okay so this is the plus two okay so let's just go ahead and see what that does to our field what the heck huh so one 
two, three. Okay, those are my uh, 3D orbitals at the lower energy, and then the orbitals at a higher energy here. And I've got chloride, and is chloride a strong or weak? Well, um, I'll just throw these little notes up here. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I drew this on the, the other one. And, oh, what the heck, let's just, let's just, just do it again here. Okay, so um, if you remember when we talked about the spectral chemical series, I said I had uh, strong ligands here and weak ligands over here. And I said that the cyanide ion, carbon monoxide, would be greater NO2 negative, greater than ammonia, okay, H2O, hydroxide, uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, oh, iodine, okay, iodine, ion. Okay, so chlorine is going to be over here, and I said right, right about approximately here is where I have my strong and weak field. You know, you've got a little gray area here. So this is clearly way over here. So what's it's it's a pretty good case that um, iron two chloride. We're talking about chlorine is overall going to have a pretty weak field. Okay, so um, with that in mind, let's just see how the electrons would go in. Okay, so this is a weak field, right? So that means that um, the electrons are going to want to prefer to go up to the higher energy levels instead of pairing. Okay, so I've got six electrons that I need to account for. So let's go ahead and do that. That's one, two, three. Okay, instead of pairing up here, four, five, and then six. Okay, so that would be the configuration because this is a, a weak field. All right. And um, this is also a high spin system, okay, and you've got lots of unpaired electrons there. So this is going to be a paramagnetic complex. So there's quite a bit that I can, I can predict about um, this, the, the, this uh, complex. Um, knowing crystal field theory, um, I can look at the, the overall crystalline geometry. I can predict it, it, what the field splitting is going to be like. I can predict this high spin. I can predict that it's paramagnetic. Um, I can also predict um, the spectrochemical series a little bit. Um, this is a weak field, so um, the color, you know, we could talk about the color, and we know that it's, it's probably going to absorb, um, since it's a weak field, more more of the red light and appear uh, more uh, bluish color. Um, so there are some pretty good predictions we can make there. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to cut it off here. Hopefully you found this, this to be helpful. And, 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 and again, I'm, I'm really bad at drawing, but hopefully that made sense. Okay, guys, as always, thanks for hanging in there.